Hello? Hello? I think we're on. It may be buffering. Don't know. Can't tell. Yes, I think we're on now. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> I hope you can uh, see me or hear me or both, preferably. Um, I'm just going to check if I can see us. Uh, welcome to our, our live stream this morning. I haven't cut any uh, palm meat out, so I'm, I'm, it looks like a terrible setup, doesn't it? But I actually haven't done any palm leaves. Um, I hope you've had a good week. I don't know if anyone's watching yet. I can't see the numbers on this new screen. It's been telling me all week to go to a new um, thing, and um, I don't really know how it works. Doesn't seem to be saying how many people are, are viewing. 13. So there we go. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, feel free then to uh, say hello to people. And have a bit of a chat while I make a palm leaf or two. I suppose I should be in giving instructions on how to do this because it's a very it's a very complicated thing. <clears throat> yeah, that'll do. It's very Palm Sunday you know, isn't it? Right, so find the stream. Oh, there we are. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think I think we've connected now. My uh, my IT's caught up with everyone else's. Oh, there we are. Look at that. It's like a, it's like the BBC around here. It's so bad. I'm going to do that. Is that better? They just look like green fish, don't they? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so let's let's see who's here then, shall we? All right. So uh, yeah, Jen, Lauren, Helen, hello. Oh, she's over there anyway. So we don't need to. See ya, hello Saxon Court. Wow, well, Sue. Kathy David. Oh, it's Tom. Oh, it's Tom. Oh, hello Tom. Good to see ya. Joe, Kochai, Marge, yes. Yes, I was going to, um, oh, we got some Australians. Good to see you, Australians. Michael Paula, nice to see you. I should be them that's my uh, my brother and sister in Australia, so it's actually really I'm really chuffed. It's nice to see you. Come on, Annette, Sam, Jan, good. Nice to see everyone. Well, today is uh, the Pet Sunday. I can I'm going to experiment with putting a a, uh, a picture on. If I can find it, I'm very new at this sort of thing, you know. No, it's not letting, oh, it's not letting me share screen. Well, that's weird. Because when I practiced, it let me share screen, and now it's not letting me share screen. So this is going to get very awkward. If it doesn't let me do that. <clears throat> well, if I can't share the screen later, then all them pet photos you sent in, it's going to be very upsetting, isn't it? <clears throat> But we'll, we'll deal with that nearer the time. So how's everyone been? Oh, good to see you, Simon. Have people uh, had a good week? You can put stuff in the comment. Yeah, the green fish. Uh, I think it was Joe that sent me actually a, 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 an article on how to do palm leaves which just involved a bit of effort i think but um it's not really my forte is it let's be honest i'm only just getting the hang of this internet stuff so 
you've got you just got to you're gonna have to just bear with me in terms of basically everything else to do with my life or oh, it's still not letting me oh i don't know what to do about the um the sharing of the screen that that's very inconvenient because when i practiced earlier it was it was due it was doing it fine so i don't know so if anyone knows the answer to that um let me know oh i don't know what it's doing now da, da, da. yeah okay oh vicky's been decorating all week that's good see not everyone's wasting the time just sitting in the garden well not that i've been it's been too cold hasn't it but Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me mother, me mother's on. Hello, mother. You all right? I've never seen my family this much. You know, if it's, if it's been, you know, we keep seeing each other these days. Describe every pet to us in detail. We may, it may come to that. It's going to involve me doing some very... Uh, I'll have to turn the microphone off so you can't hear my, my personal comments as I try and make the whole thing work. The other thing is, right, it's quarter to 11 and I thought, oh, that's fine, that's fine. I've got loads of time, loads of time. I'll walk around the house a bit. Two minutes, I haven't checked my hair or anything. It's bad, isn't it? Although if you saw the Three Trees show on Friday, you'll realize partly why it's so bad when I, I, had, a, I had a remote haircut which is an interesting experience. Anyway, welcome. Good to see you. We're here because, well, I don't know, all kinds of reasons, I guess. We're trying to find a bit of peace in the middle of all this. We're here because we're connected to one another. And uh, one way or another, we're all part of Chelmsley. We're back to church family across the world, across the city and um, across the country. So it's good to have that connection and to be related to one another. So this morning I did put something in the chat earlier to give an outline. So if this is your first time with us, uh, you're very welcome. It's good to see you. We, we're a bit weird normally when we meet in real life. So this is probably just a bit more remotely weird. But um, we spend a bit of time in quiet, a bit of time reflecting on stuff, a bit of time just kind of hanging out really. Um, yeah, and usually it's, it's a pretty good time together so we're going to start with a bit of oh we've got to start with the notices oh yes it's birthdays on the first Sunday of the month normally we have a very informal uh, Sunday morning and um, we sit around tables and we have birthdays and I haven't got the list off Norma uh, so can you start putting in if it's your birthday in April isn't it it is April now isn't it so put your birthdays if you've got a birthday in April stick them in the chat Hmm. Yeah, I haven't got any chocolates, but I have got left the half a bag of jelly. Well, not so half a bag. So uh, it's Joe's. Ironically, Joe has other people's birthday chocolates, and um, she's not here. So I'll, I'll have your birthday jelly, babe. Thanks, Joe. Hmm. That's good. Cheers, Joe. I don't know who else's birthday it is. Rachel's. Rachel's birth Sorry? Rachel's birthday. Thanks, Rach. I assume this is the Rachel, whose real name is Megatron. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, Emily's yesterday. Happy birthday, Emily, for yesterday. David Stanley, oh no, is that Tom? Yours is the 22nd. Happy birthday, Tom. Have a good one. <laughs> oh, Joe from Saxon Call. Happy birthday, Joe from Saxon Call. And other places, obviously, you're more than just that. You're a, you're a whole human being. But yeah. Happy birthday. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, Mina's on the 22nd. Happy birthday. Uh, all went back in. So I'm not sharing these anyway. Happy birthday, Mina. Thanks. Oh, hi, Don and Betty. They found their way back. So you do know what you're doing, really. You can't accidentally find us every single time, can you? Oh, there's a list here. Pat Hayes. Oh, it's Charles's. Is. Happy birthday, Charles. Joe. And so. Fiona. Fiona. I've only got one left. So, uh, happy birthday, Fiona. Um, Mina, I've said to you, so that's fine. Happy birthday, Joan. Tom. That's good. Although I'm going to get a sugar crash at about um, about 20 past, maybe half past. There'll be this great sugar crash, and I'll, I'll just wonder what the point is. So, <clears throat> I feel a bit sick now, to be honest. <laughs> That's the birthdays done. There are other notices, as you can imagine. I've written them down. We'll get on to something slightly more serious in a bit, I'm sure. Oh yeah, it's Pat's uh, significant birthday this year, so uh, anyway. So, first of all of the notices, I'll say this again at the end if I remember, if you need some help, ask, put it in the chat. We have tried to set up uh, a system where everyone's got someone looking out for them and everyone's in a little group, but there are people that have joined us since um, online or or people that maybe haven't particularly been associated beforehand if you need some help get in touch and we can get some help even if it's just a chat that's that's what we're about we're about community so if you need or if you need anything doing let somebody know as i said last week you're not more than two meters away from help there is always someone that can come and help you if even if it's just a bit of a chat to reassure you or just because you're feeling a bit of a loose end and you don't want to eat that last bag of jelly babies um, that's sitting there staring at you because anyway enough about me <laughs> um, we have tried to mail out uh, palm crosses to everyone that's on the the church family list so hopefully you've got that if you haven't you may not be on the church family list in which case make sure you get on it um, or the postie as not got around to delivering me. I know some people have received them. Also, this year we're doing this. We've got a ribbon for Easter. So this is for Easter morning. If you hang this up on Easter morning somewhere obvious, where either you can see it or in, in a window or on a, on a gate post, just to mark Easter day. But that's for next week. So today, uh, today, next week. Um, I'm going to tell you about the uh, Easter plans because normally we do quite a lot of things this coming week, which is Holy Week. So we are still going to do a few things in different various onlines, but perhaps I'll chat through them at the end because otherwise we're chatting on still and we haven't even got anywhere started yet. So I'll maybe wait till the end for that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically the uh, notices for now, I think. I do, wouldn't it? So, shall we take a few moments and shall we be still? I don't know what your household is like at the moment, whether you're on your own, whether everyone in your house is watching this or there's other people knocking around doing other things. It doesn't matter because here we are and here you are. So be quiet and be still. One of the things that we do in our in our faith tradition, um, 
in fact, like every faith tradition really, is that we try and train ourselves to tune in to uh, to the divine, if you want to use generic terms, we would say tuning into God. We try and kind of connect with, with God, with the, with the divine, to, to listen out for the whisper of God into us and, and into our world, to, to see God's presence in the universe around us, but also to feel his spirit here. So just be quiet for a moment and be aware. Be aware of yourself, what's going on around you, what's going on inside of you. You may have been still a week. This is a different kind of stillness. This is choosing to pause, to find the sacred in this moment. You may have had a hectic week with screens and with people, and with exercise and with phone calls. Now is different. So in the stillness, Just look back over the last week, perhaps look back a day at a time. It may all seem a blur, you don't know one day from the next. But just look back over the last six or seven days. And now just pull something out from those days, something that was perhaps quite upsetting or negative. Maybe it hurt you, caused you pain. Maybe it's something in the news. Maybe it was fear. Maybe there's a point in the week when you felt lonely or unwell. Point when Perhaps you got annoyed, you had a row with the other people in your house. Perhaps the power cut out. You lost 10 minutes of the game you were just playing. Perhaps you ran out of toilet paper and the cat's never going to visit you again while you're, when you're in the bathroom. Who knows, just look back over the last week and just pick out something that caused you a bit of upset and hold it. The memory, and the emotion and the thoughts. It's not wrong to have this negative emotion. It's good though to examine it, see how it affects you, how it affects how you behave to others. We have emotions just as we breathe and think and whatever else we do. The negative ones can threaten to overwhelm us. They overinflate and suffocate. So whatever that was, that negative thing that you picked out from this week, just look at it and breathe. Get some perspective on it.
and look back. Look at some of the positives, the blessings you've had this week. Just pick out something that went well, that brought you joy, that made you laugh. Maybe it's a phone call or a sandwich, having a smooth haired cat, the sunshine, maybe your sofa. Just look back over a point this week when you felt actually it is okay. It is good. And just hold that, hold that positive feeling, that positive memory and look at it. And give thanks for it. And now in all those things that happen over the week, just take half a minute and try and spot the presence of God in those moments, the sacred in the week. Where was God in those moments that perhaps when you look back, there was a glow around them. There was something about goodness and grace in those times. Where was God in these last five or six days? And now look ahead, the rest of today, next week, ask that you'll be open to hear God's voice, to see God's presence and to feel his spirit. So well, thank you that you're with us in these times, as you're with us in every time. Help us just to see through the fabric of this reality, to see this deeper reality of you binding the universe together, holding each one of us in the palm of your hand, shining your light into our deepest darkness, bringing your joy and perhaps we feel there is only despair. Amen. These are strange times, and I guess times that this are revealing, I suppose, how we use our energies. Um, particularly if you're sharing a house at the moment, it's gonna be a bit weird seeing people all the time because we'll go out, won't we? And we'll disperse our energy. We talk to other people, we'll, we'll be annoyed or delighted or whatever it might be with other people. And our families, our friends, who, if we're sharing a house, are getting the whole of us all the time. And whilst uh, some of us think that's probably a great thing and they're probably very uh, pleased to be getting that, um, it can be wearing, I suspect, on others. But it's a way, I suppose, of us discovering a bit more about each other and how we work. And if we haven't got other people in the house, it's a way of, I suppose, discovering how we cope with that, how we manage that. Because again, we can't go out, can we? We can't go out and meet other people and be energized in that same way. So we have to find other ways and explore, I suppose, what we're like without those other props. For all of us, what, are, what, what am I if I can't go to work? What am I if I can't go down the shops, if I can't do these things I normally do? Am I somehow not me? Yeah, I might explore that one a bit more at some point. All I'd say though, I normally say a lot about stuff anyway, be careful with yourself. Look after yourself 
And don't be hard on yourself because these are hard times. Anyway, I'm going to try and do the Pet Sunday thing now, but I think my computer is revolting. I'll just see if anyone's shouted out anything and I haven't, and I've missed them. <laughs> it's church gym, but not as we know it. That's true. It but it wasn't before, to be honest, was it? Anyway, um, if I can't make the pet thing work, I'm, I'm going to be quite upset, really. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try, though. Let's, uh, let's get that down there. Let's get, can, can I drag anything? I don't know if I can. It's definitely not letting me share a screen. Ooh. Ooh. Quick access. No, I don't want to do that. No, can't do that. Can't do that. So I don't know. Don't know. Hmm? I could do it. People can see the, uh, I don't know whether to show the pictures or not. What do you think happens? See, we should, and then we can make hilarious comments on them. I'll have to wait, I'll have to wait for a, a comment because this is um, quite distressing. I can't share the uh, thing with you. No, it's just not, it's not letting me do it. Well, it just goes to show, kids, don't bother practicing because it doesn't work anyway. There's a life lesson we've all got. Can't, can't change anything. Nope, nope, nope. Right, so what we're going to do in a in a high tech kind of a way is Helen's going to scroll through the pictures with her phone. Is that all right doing that, Helen? And then we'll watch it on this and uh, just share everyone's pets. Just finding it there. There were some good pet pet sh shots here, and um, if if we. Uh, if you like this, I might I might do this again next year. Here we go. Stand by for a slightly less efficient way of sharing pictures. Just when I seem to have sorted out the microphone as well, something else appears to have gone wrong. Can't change any of those settings now, you know. What? Just have to go through oh, that's not going to work. It's a bit too small, isn't it? It's going to be too small, I think. Well, so let's just sit here for 10 minutes and pretend we're looking at pictures of people's animals. You're just going to have to visit the uh, comment page or the comments below and look at the pets. Although I can have a quick look here. I haven't got any favourites right. But there is a cat. I can't remember whose cat it was now. Was it? Was it Kim's cat? That was a cat. That cat had a face, didn't it? And then there was a dog. And I know people are going to get upset because everyone's dog's nice. But there was a big dog. Was that? Was that Kathy's dog? I don't know if I've met him before. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, he's a good fellow, he is. Yeah, see, let's see if it'll, uh, I, I, I'm going to, one last desperate attempt. No, it's not going to happen. And nice to see some guinea pigs there. I've always thought right about guinea pigs. Here's my theory on guinea pigs. It's uh, not really science. And to be honest, it's not particularly biblical. But uh, once God had finished making the world, all the animals and everything, can't remember today, was that the sixth day? Was that the sixth day? Look, I can't, I can't get that. You know, this is weird. Anyway, on, on, was it whatever day God, <laughs> whatever day God finished making everything anyway, um, he kind of run out of, of, of parts. So at the start, he was making all this complicated stuff. 
you know, with lots of legs and things. So I think spiders are probably one of the first ones there because they've got loads of bits going, aren't they? Loads of, God's had like, I've got loads of legs. What am I going to do with all these? I suppose the other option is it could have been at the end of creation. God said, I've got hundreds of legs left. What should you do? And someone said, well, why don't you put it on those round bits and uh, just make something out of that? So I don't know. Perhaps a theologian can help with that. But in, when he's getting towards the end, he, he was kind of running out of parts and he had no arms left, right? But he had low little hands. So he kind of made this shape and just stuck a hand on each corner and, and that, that's guinea pigs. But then he ran out of, uh, of the little hands as well. And uh, so he just had that. So he rolled it a bit more and, and that's where snakes and uh, worms come from. Yeah, so there you go. Of course, I can't prove that. I can't prove it. I look like something from the 80s, don't I now? I, I should never have started, should I, really? The, Jay, I blame Jay for this. I'm, pro I'm not so bad if I sit at a slight angle. Anyway, we're going to uh, spend a few moments to uh, what today is all about. Yes. Um, yeah, you have seen the pose, huh? Have you tried turning it off and on again? I've, have I tried throwing it out the window? Yeah. Can you do continue to watch while you access Facebook? I, I don't know. Can I? <laughs> I don't know how I, I don't know how I would do that. Have you tried deciding never to do live streaming again? Let me look at my options. That's all set up. See, stream health. My stream is quite healthy. That's what my GP told me. Anyway, video clipping polls. No, I don't want to do that. Help! I need help. Now, now it's just opening something else. Oh, that's too complicated. There, there's like reams of stuff going on there now. No. Shall we, well, should we get down to business? Shall we now? All right. Has anyone said no? Yes, yeah, centipedes. That's a good question. I haven't, uh, I haven't come up with a good answer for the centipede one. Oh, yeah. I know, you know the leafy sea dragon? That was, he just had a kind of shape there and a pair of scissors. I just keep trimming it, see what happens. And because um, the leafy sea dragons are fabulous. I don't know if you've seen them. Centipedes though, I don't know. I know that one. What he did is he made some worms right, but he'd left, uh, he'd left the cheese grater out and it wriggled over the cheese grater and made a right mess. But he thought that's quite a good idea. So he, he went with it. Anyway, I can't prove any of that. It's just my theory. Um, on it all. Come on. We've all got places to be, I'm sure. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to uh, talk a bit about what today is all about. I'm just trying to keep track. I've lost track. See, it confused me there, having to talk about the beginnings of all creation. Threw me a bit. Here's some good stuff. In Luke 19, I should have put this in the readings. It's Luke 19 that we're, we're looking at today. Um, a friend of mine did an 80s day yesterday and, and he posted the pictures. And I, I keep, whenever I catch myself now, I think, yeah, that must be what I, you know, when the hair went a bit like, like that. Anyway, Luke 19, I'm going to read from verse 19. I'm using the message translation, which. Um, you may or may not have. Just listen anyway. Jesus headed straight up to Jerusalem. And when he got near Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a colt tethered, one that's never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says anything, asks, asks what are you doing? Say, his master needs him. The two left and found it just as he said. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said, what are you doing untying the colt? They said his master needs it. They brought the colt to Jesus and then throwing their coats on its back, they helped Jesus get on it. 
As he rode, the people gave him a grand welcome, throwing their coats on the, on the street. Right at the crest, where the Mount of Olives begins its descent, the whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise over all the mighty works they'd witnessed. Blessed is the one who comes, the king, who becomes king in God's name. All's well in heaven and glory in the high places. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd told him, teacher, get your disciples under control. But he said, if they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. When the city came into view, he wept over it. If you'd only recognised this day and everything that was good for you, but now it's too late. In the days ahead, your enemies are going to bring up their heavy artillery and surround you, pressing in on every side. All this because you didn't recognise and welcome God's personal visit. Jesus then goes on to have a bit of a, of a moment at the temple, the, the famous tipping over the tables and all that kind of stuff. But this is the, uh, the entry into Jerusalem, the famous Palm Sunday with the donkey kind of stuff going on. So we reach Palm Sunday. And this is one of those uh, key moments because everything is hanging in the air now. The shouting and the waving and the celebration that all goes on around Jesus. It almost, when I, when I kind of read this bit, if you read the stuff beforehand, you've got Jesus kind of healing and talking to people and all the stuff going on. And then this moment happens. And it's almost at this point in a film, that the whole thing kind of moves into slow motion as the week counts down. You can always see that in the way that the Gospels are written because you've got the life of Jesus, the sort of ministry time of Jesus that takes up a chunk. And then this kind of Easter Passion Week takes up a huge space proportionally. So it's almost as though there's all this stuff that Jesus crams in and he hits this week and then everything slows right down because the most significant moment is about to happen. And Palm Sunday is that moment when it, when you can see it actually happens. It's as though someone drops, I don't know, drops a coin and it just slowly falls to the ground as Easter week begins. And the darkness that starts to overtake events starts to uh, gather on the horizon. The clouds are there. But at this particular moment, this popular preacher, this miracle worker, this local healer, he rides in. Expectation is high. The people have been waiting for a saviour. And here he is. And aren't we waiting for a saviour? The language has changed in the last 20 centuries. We're far more sophisticated, obviously apparently. We didn't expect a miracle worker in the same way that they did in first century Palestine. Salvation in the 21st century looks very different. Perhaps it's a lottery win or perhaps it's promotion or something just to change. If this thing just changes, then I know everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to get sorted out. But despite the 21st century veneer, humans I think are pretty much still the same as they always were. Because when you read the stories of Jesus, how people behaved, how they treated one another, how they spoke to one another, their, their sense of who's important and what's important and who isn't. The way that they feel when things happen, the way that they suffer loss, the way that they celebrate uh, good times, not much has really changed. So we're not that different perhaps from our forebears all those centuries back. And aren't we still waiting for a savior to save us from hurt or from loss or from illness or from despair or from loneliness or stress or hurt or debt or difficult relationships or addiction or emptiness from the circumstances we're in, whatever it is, that kind of tears us up. If only someone would come in and just sort things out for us. For the people of Jesus' time, they wanted someone who would come in and deal with the Romans. The Romans had come in to that part of the world, well, all over that part of the world, really, and taken over. I guess as oppressors go, they weren't too bad, as long as you did what you were told. 
But the Jewish people are at the point Jesus and his people were waiting for the Romans to be dealt with. That's what they wanted to happen. They wanted autonomy. They wanted self-rule. They wanted to be left alone to get on with things. That was the salvation that they longed for, for freedom and for liberation. So their idea of salvation is very different to the one that we have in the West, particularly now. And I think the idea when we talk about salvation now, the idea that springs to mind for people, particularly in the West, is a hangover really from that pretty terrible medieval period, which we've talked about a few weeks back. When we talk about salvation, people think, ah, oh, we're talking about the devil and all of his pitchforks. This is what people think that's what we mean. But I think we make salvation a toothless beast, a kind of waffly personal peccadillo if it's just about me, if it's just about me being all right. Because salvation, if you do it properly, salvation is meaty and powerful. Salvation breaks chains and shatters empires. Salvation sets nations free. That's proper salvation. And that's the salvation that the Bible speaks about. And I think the church has kind of drawn its teeth. It's pulled its teeth. It's kind of made it this personal, well, as long as you're okay, as long as you feel you're right and you've put yourself right, everything's all right. That's not salvation at all. Because the salvation that you find in the Bible, the God of the Bible, isn't some self-help, feel-good guru. We have Moses and Deborah and Samson and Esther and Gideon and Ruth and Jesus. That's the kind of images we get of salvation. The saviour riding in Jerusalem wasn't selling self-help books and motivational DVDs. Not that anyone sells DVDs these days. He wasn't asking you to touch the screen and make a seed donation and God will come in and sort out your personal problems. That wasn't the salvation that rode in on that Palm Sunday. If it was, he would have been on a big war horse and wearing a shiny suit. This saviour was different because this saviour was subversive. This saviour could topple empires and he was humble and riding on a donkey. Trouble is we create saviours in our own image. We want them to do our bidding, to save us from the list of things that we don't like. But God's plans aren't necessarily the same as our plans. God's solutions aren't necessarily the same as our solutions. Jesus' contemporaries wanted this military saviour who drive out the Romans. And Jesus, to be honest, wasn't their first go at it. Jesus Barabbas, who pops up in the story later this week, convicted of causing an uprising. Look at the zealots. They were a politically motivated group at the time of Jesus. In fact, one of the zealots was a follower of Jesus. They wanted to rid Palestine of the Romans, probably by force. But they didn't get that in Jesus. And there's a theory that this is what drove Judas to try and force the hand of Jesus with tragic consequences for everyone. But Judas wanted Jesus to do something, to act, to save the people. But God's idea of salvation was very different. So what do we want from our saviour to bring us peace, to save us from hell? bring us healing, to show us truth, to save us from drug addiction, forgive us, heal our deepest hurt, bring us money, save our marriage. None of those are bad things, but none of them are salvation. They are perhaps the consequence of salvation. A few years ago, I was talking, well, I wasn't really talking. This is one of those things when you say, I was talking to this person, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I was in the same room <laughs> and he was speaking. Um, and he was talking a few years back. I think I've used this, this uh, illustration before. Um, the Christian Aid campaign about Make Poverty History. And it was one of the, an ex-director of uh, Christian Aid. And it said that we've got within the, on the planet, within the, um, particularly with the developed nations, but all of them. In theory, we could eliminate poverty. There's enough resources to finish poverty off for once and for all. We could do
deal with it so no one is living in poverty. And actually, it wouldn't cost that much. People that know these things and have done the theory have worked out we could end poverty. But the guy was saying, it's not going to happen because it doesn't address the human condition. It's a political solution, but it doesn't address the human condition because it didn't bring, bring about a change in people. And without doing that, we remain essentially selfish and self-seeking. And he was right because salvation isn't about a political solution. Salvation is about people being changed, people being changed, not me making sure I'm all right. It's about us. So what do we get? What do we get with all this talk of salvation? That uh, arrival in, Jeru in Jerusalem of Jesus fulfilled a prophecy in the book of Zechariah, which is another ancient prophecy. And in the book of Zechariah, which you can never find when you look in the Bible, but I, I promise you it is in there, chapter 9. The prophet says, shout and cheer, daughter Zion. Raise the roof, daughter Jerusalem. Your king is coming, a good king who makes all things right. A humble king riding on a donkey. A mere cult of a donkey. I've had it with war. No more chariots in a frame. No more war horses in Jerusalem. No more swords and spears and bows and arrows. He will offer peace to the nations. A peaceful rule worldwide. From the four winds to the seven seas. Those words were spoken to a people who were desperate and in exile. They'd lost everything even hope. But here is their king, not another ruler on a war chariot, not another emperor, not another dictator, not another party leader, but one of them, their brother. And it's because salvation is about breaking the power of the oppressive forces that crush us. For us today, we do need salvation. And don't take this the wrong way. But we don't need salvation from some medieval idea of hell. We need salvation from the empires that control us. And I'm not paranoid or into conspiracy theories, and, and, and I don't think 5G have got anything to do with the situation we're in. But we need salvation from the TV and from the government and from social media and from the multinationals. They all want our hearts and minds. And it's not because they care about us but because they want our stuff, they want our money and our work. They want to own and control us. And we can't fight them. We're already, all of us, caught within those chains of oppression. Now, you know me, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Converse shoes. I know it's a bit trivial, but um, by way of example, I really like Converse shoes, not because they're the best shoe, because there's more comfortable shoes and shoes that last longer. But I just like them because of their image and their association. We can't fight it. it. We kind of absorb this stuff, but we can find salvation. And in part, salvation gives us a vantage point that helps to see what's important and what isn't. A new way of, a new way of measuring things that isn't about pounds, but about goodness. That doesn't mean that everything out there is bad. There's some really good stuff out there. There's good TV shows, there's good politicians. It's just that everything out there isn't all that there is. So Jesus rides in on a donkey. So he doesn't compete with all the fantastic shiny stuff, the Mercs and the BMWs. He comes in on an old Nissan Micra. And this, this is our God. This is our savior who came to lift the lowly and break bread with the poor and somehow defeat the powers that seek to consume and destroy us. So I would urge you to seek that savior who's bigger than any one of us, who understands far more than any one of us, whose outstretched arms embraces the whole world black and white and rich and poor and gay and straight and happy and sad and lost and found and faithful and faithless. Jesus isn't just my saviour who came to save me from my personal imperfections. 
He's the savior. And whatever powers we face, that's what he came to rescue us from. Amen. We're going to have a time of quiet, which will be good, to pray. This is a chance to put into the chat anything that you'd like praying for, anyone you'd like praying for. Possibly, um, unless everyone knows them and it's public, you don't need to put names in. You can just say someone I know and that kind of thing. And the people who know will know who you mean. But there's a chance to perhaps give some prayers of thanks to God for the last week, the good stuff, for those that are continuing to work in this environment, those that are working to keep things going. Pray for those who need help. So let's, uh, let's have a couple of minutes where we can just pray and offer up to God things that are going on.
So let's remember all those going through a difficult time. Last year, I remember when we reached in last year, a few people said how bad 2019 have been. Let's hope 2020 is going to be better. Well, 2020, you've done a pretty good job. Top in last year, I tell you. So, uh, yeah. Let's keep praying. Let's hold this thing together. 2020 is what it is, I suppose, to be a, to be a cliche with it all. But we have each other, and whatever life throws at us, we can stand together and know that God has not abandoned us. I suppose we can also learn in the midst of all this to see the good, to see the good that is around us, the good that is in other people. And that, for some people, will be a revelation. But hopefully we can see that the balance is out and actually the goodness and the grace far outweighs the negative. So, Lord, we thank you for all the good that we see. We thank you for the difference that people are making to the lives of those around them. We pray that advances will be made within medicine, that the virus can be managed and contained and fought back. We thank you for all those who are fighting on every front to keep things going. And we pray for ourselves, that whether we're facing darkness at this time, whether we feel energized and ready to act. Keep us united and keep us filled with your grace at this time. Amen. I think we'll draw it to a close. I appear to have gone on a bit, as usual. So we'll say the grace to finish the kind of formal part. Then we can grab a coffee and have a bit of a chat. And I'll, I'll let you know about the Easter plans after that as well. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. See you in a couple of minutes. So, thanks, Joe. It feels weird doing our services like this, not being able to walk about. And not getting the response, you know, people booing and walking out, that kind of thing. Although, I don't know, maybe people have walked out, I don't know. <laughs> yes. I'll put that there so I can see what people are chatting. So if you don't normally come to one of our Sunday mornings, um, at this point, people then just hang around and make me wait an hour before I can go home because they won't leave because they're chatting to each other. So this is that moment now. So get yourself coffee. And normally they demolish all the biscuits as well. That's not going to be happening, is it? I don't know if we've got any biscuits left myself. I don't want one. I've eaten too many. I'm still on a jelly baby high, to be honest. Blimey. They're posh. You saying hello, Helen, or not? Hi, everyone. Staying in? No. Okay. It is a bit awkward, isn't it, staring <laughs> at the um, camera? Happy Palm Sunday.
Kyle, if anyone wants to see the mug. I think I said this last week, Kelvin, that I kind of want, I want my life to be, what's, the, what's that doing French one? What's that doing French one, Hannah? What? That doing French show where she's a vicar. Vicar Dibley. That's it. I want my life to be the vicar of Dibley, but my life is actually Father Ted. Or Rev. Yeah, Rev. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, sorry, Seth, because look, Seth, we got really nice biscuits. It's not just the rich tea and the cheap custard creams. Look at that. These are not just digestive, uh, classic caramel. I'm sorry about that, Seth, but I'll have to eat these. Although I could just leave them there unopened, which would make it even more frustrating for you. I'll leave them there unopened, and I'll just throw them away at the end because no one obviously wants any. Go well, hey. Yeah, the cookie just appeared. I'm still annoyed I can't show you that live video. I need to, I need to get over it, don't I? Have you noticed I've been using a microphone and no one said they can't hear me? So I appear to have solved that problem. I'm going to... I'm going to... Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know what's doing now, so just carry on. There it is. I should have done that. So, da, 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 stream setup. Use camera. Stream. I wonder if you can only do one thing at a time. I mean, that, that would figure because that's what I'm like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to goggle it. Share screen on Facebook Live. What do you think? Hmm. It says here, sharing your makes your sharing your screen a painless experience. Simply click the share screen button. You know what? I simply clicked the fair share screen button and nothing happened because it didn't light up. So there we go. Thank you once again. Computer helplines completely unhelpful. I can't I could be. You right there, Helen? Am I missing something on the chat? Okay. Oh. Oh, well done, Gary. Are you saying I'm Father Jack, Vicky? <laughs> There should be a feature on this. If you've arrived late in the stream, you can rewind it and miss all the idle chatter. Why, why wouldn't you? Or why would you? I don't know anyway. So you can rewind. Joe says, has anyone got plans for the week? I was going to tell you about, yeah, but tell us your plans and then I'll tell you all the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter morning plans. I'll have to check where they are. I wrote them down somewhere. All right, done all that. Mm, 
sleeps. Good idea. Well, how's the news sharing going? Nothing there, nothing there. Next week's plans, are we ready for them now? Let's, let's do them. I'm just doing one last attempt and then I'm going to shut up about it all. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nah. Anyway, right, that's the next week there. Sorry about that. So next week, here's the plan. On Oh yeah. On Monday Thursday, normally the church family get together and have a meal which obviously we can't do so this year what we're going to do is we're just going to have a communion together we'll do it again on the live stream at seven o'clock i will put all this on a poster and on the chat and everything so at seven o'clock we're going to share communion if you want to have a a meal as well that's fine or beforehand but we're going to share bread and wine and share the story of of Maundy thursday so that's from seven o'clock. So it might take a little bit longer than the normal during the week prayer. So it might be 30 minutes or something like that. So we'll share communion and also remind ourselves of the story of, of the Last Supper. So that's Maundy Thursday. And then on Good Friday, instead of the usual midday prayers, we're doing a prayer vigil for an hour. So that will start at 12. So starting at the normal time. And we're going to do the Stations of the Cross for an hour. So there'll be an hour of prayer then to mark Good Friday morning. Usually on Good Friday, we would join with St. Andrew's Church and we'd often do a blessing around the community as well. So obviously we can't be doing that this time. So we'll do a prayer vigil for an hour. Although on Good Friday, you might want to on your walk, um, do a prayer walk around your neighbourhood and just ask for God's blessing on, you, on your community. Might be a good thing to do, actually. And then Easter morning at six o'clock, we're going to do sunrise prayers. So those that get up, we'll do prayers at six o'clock live stream. So you can have a line and watch them on the replay if you like at six o'clock. And then for breakfast, we're going to have a Zoom. We're going to try and have a Zoom brereakfast. Now, I know not everyone can do Zoom, but not everyone can do everything anyway. So I think it's just a case of let's just do the best we can and make the most of it. So we will have a, a Zoom breakfast at nine o'clock. I'll put the codes on the chat so you can tune in, put your computer or your tablet, phone, whatever on the table. And we can spray cornflakes over each other at a safe distance this year. So that'd be at nine. And then Easter morning at 11, we'll do the Sunday morning get together. Now, what I would like, although I can't make the screen share, 
is a chance it's a film of everyone that can possibly do it to share on Easter morning so I would like you if you can to record an Easter message of any sort an Easter greeting between 30 and 60 seconds and I'll tell you where to stick them and we'll put them together as in a film and we will play that on Easter morning so we can send our greetings to one another so if you, if you can't do zoom it's hard to get to see other people's faces so what we'll do we will Evan uploads their messages to this one point that I'll tell you in a moment and then we'll put them all together in a film and play that film on Easter morning so we can all give each other Easter morning greetings I think that'll be really good so what I'm going to do for that is I will put a, a Dropbox set up and what you do is you just go to that you follow that link and then you upload your film now if you're not sure how to make a film I will tell you at a later date when I put it on the chat here I will, I will attach a short film that says how to make a film if you can use Facebook you can make a film if you can take a picture with your camera you can make a film so it's very easy to do so that's the three yeah three days so Monday Thursday in the evening we'll have communion at seven good Friday 12 till 1 is the prayer vigil stations of the cross and then Easter morning six o'clock live nine o'clock zoom for breakfast and then 11 o'clock online and if you can make us a short film ideally post it by Tuesday evening because I'm going to spend Wednesday swearing trying to make the film all fit together I've never done that before oh yes the other thing is Helen's just reminded me it's traditional to Easter bonnets on Easter morning we will have an Easter bonnet parade at the zoom breakfast so wear your Easter bonnets on Easter morning if you can't make the zoom breakfast send us a photo in on Easter morning not before because I'll just lose them if you do it before so Easter bonnets that's a lot to think about don't worry about remembering all that because I will stick it all in writing on the chat How's that? I'm assuming these uh, faces and hearts mean that everyone approves. That's good. Is that right? I'm on my own this time. Yeah. <laughs> Did it work? Hmm? Right, I'll be signing off in a couple of minutes. So it's good to see you. We will meet again soon. Failing that, I'll see you tomorrow at 12. So 12 o'clock tomorrow is midday prayers. We've got the, the usual midday prayers running. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the, the prayer vigil on Friday. The other thing is, if you if you watch the Three Trees chat, it's not on Friday this week because it's Good Friday. It will be on Thursday at 10.30, but we will remind you on this as well. So stay in touch. I'm hoping Chris is going to be doing a show Wednesday afternoon as well. If he is, we'll let you know. So anyway, good to see you all. We'll hope you bump into each other during the week one way or another. Keep walking. Keep washing your hands. Keep looking out for, each, out for each other. And remember to have a break from all this stuff every now and then. Just uh, have a break for yourself and recharge. Okay. See you then. God bless. See you all soon. Bye then. Bye.